This book was scheduled to coincide with the printing of the 100 millionth Babysitter's Club book. That is a lot of books. Not only that, but it's the last BSC book that Anne Martin wrote. So it's a super special, super special. Argofonf book review, Argofonf book review. As the cover shows, all the babysitters have a sleepover at Christie's house. Mallory says she's looking forward to writing her What I Did During Summer Vacation essay. Claudia sighed. It's really a shame, she said. What's a shame? That Mal's such a dork. Hey, I'm not a dork. Am I? You brought a notepad to a slumber party so you could take notes for an essay, Mallory. Yes, you're a dork. The girls discuss essay topics. Jesse thinks it'd be interesting to write about your most vivid memory. And so, the babysitters remember. Chrissy begins with a recap chapter. 100 million books, 100 million recap chapters. The sad part is there is no reason for a recap chapter. The entire book takes place several years ago, before the Babysitter's Club was founded. We don't need to hear how the Babysitter's Club works. It cannot possibly affect the story, because it doesn't exist yet. Okay, rant over. Christy remembers being ten years old, when Mom was struggling to raise four kids by herself. Christy is impressed by Mom's empowering example. She wants to grow up and be just like her. One day, David Michael's babysitter flakes out. Christy wants to be grown up, so she begs Mom to let her babysit him. Mom says yes, and Christy makes a detailed plan for the entire afternoon. During the sitting job, five different women check in on Christy multiple times, just to make sure she's doing okay. I thought this was a little strange. Mom can't find anyone to babysit David Michael this afternoon, but she can find four people to stop by and visit? Why didn't Mom ask one of them to babysit? Naturally, Christy's first babysitting job is a success, and a legend is born. Stacy's most vivid memory is getting diabetes. Sixth grade starts with her and Lane trying to find a new girl to join their clique. The group has a sleepover with a new student named Allison. Stacy drinks a ton of soda and wets the bed while she is asleep. She has to be taken home in shame. Stacy is soon diagnosed with diabetes. The rest of the school year is a disaster, and she is thrilled when her parents move away from New York. What? Stacy was glad to leave New York? Then why does she complain about missing New York in every single book? Continuity! So, Stacy's story is the prequel to book number three. Sixteen years later, Anne Martin will write another Stacy prequel story. Stacy gets more prequels than Star Wars. Six-year-old Claudia is excited when the art teacher gives them homework. They have to draw self-portraits. The instructions are to draw yourself the way you see yourself. Claudia draws the best butterfly picture she can, using up every crayon in the box. She's proud of her picture, but the art teacher gets mad and criticizes her for not following directions. Way to step on kindergartner's dreams, Miss Packett. Claudia runs home crying. Grandma Mimi confronts Miss Packett and explains Claudia was following the rules. She drew herself as a butterfly because she sees herself as a free spirit. Claudia's creative, and Mimi won't stand for teachers punishing her just because she's an individual. Grandma Mimi is so amazing, truly. And that's how Claudia's love affair with art was born. Jessie's most vivid memory is Squirt's birth. Jessie doesn't want to have a baby in the house because they're smelly and noisy, and she's especially upset that she and Becca have to share a room now. Squirt is born premature, and he has colic. This is ironic, because in Book 45, Jessie had no idea what colic was. Continuity! One day, while Mom is asleep, Jessie calms down Squirt by rocking him and singing songs. He finally stops crying, and Jessie decides he's not so bad after all. And thus... A babysitting legend is born. Logan's most vivid memory is when he first met Marianne. Aw, how sweet. Of course, he's telling this to Marianne, so there's a 50-50 chance that he's just kissing up to her. Logan feels like his life is over when he moves to Connecticut and starts a new school. He notices Marianne staring at him during lunchtime, so he stops and stares at her when she's walking down the hallway. Oh, she's so gorgeous. He knows instantly that she's special. Logan asks his friends for information about Marianne. 
He purposely sits by the babysitter's club at lunch so he can interrupt their conversation and volunteer to help them babysit. So Logan and Marianne's first meeting was a setup? It wasn't a chance meeting after all? Oh, now it seems way less romantic and more creepy on Logan's part. Logan has his first babysitting job with Marianne. Logan constantly worries that he messed things up, and Marianne's gonna hate him now! But she doesn't, she loves him, and thus, another babysitting legend is born. Mallory's favorite author is Amelia Moody. Mallory learns how to send a letter to an author and what type of letter you should write to an author. She also learns you shouldn't be disappointed if it takes a long time, and in most cases, you'll receive a generic form letter. Is it just me, or is this entire segment a long lecture from Anne Martin? It feels like an instruction manual on how to send her letters. Mallory signs her letter as your number one fan, which would be a great book title. She goes to a book signing by the author. Mallory practices what she's going to say over and over again, but when the time comes, she freezes up and can't say anything. Also, the author doesn't remember her at all. It seems like this would be a huge disappointment for Mallory, since she messed up in front of her idol, but no, Mallory's inspired to become an author now. Shannon's parents are having marital issues that will never be mentioned again. A new girl named Sally White goes to their school. Sally's mother is a celebrity, so they have a huge house, they know all sorts of famous people, and she even has her own horse! Sally picks someone from Shannon's group to be her friend. When Sally gets bored with her, she picks another girl, then another. When it's Shannon's turn to be Sally's friend, she has an astronomy club test to study for. Sally is mad that Shannon would rather study than hang out with her, so she ends the friendship after less than a day. Sally is never going to have real friends with that attitude. Too bad she doesn't know the BSC are the best friends you'll ever have! Actually, I noticed some books are being advertised as America's favorite girls now. After 100 million books, I guess the Babysitter's Club has earned the right to that slogan. Well, thanks to Sally, Shannon decides she hates making friends with new girls, and that's why she was mean to Christy when they first met in Book 11. Dawn remembers her parents' divorce. It starts with her parents fighting over small things, then Dad goes out with his friends all the time instead of coming home. Mom and Dad yell at each other a lot, and Dad stops coming home for days at a time. For some reason, Mom sleeps on the couch then. I don't get it. If your husband isn't home, how is he making you sleep on the couch? Mom accuses Dad of being a liar, and he leaves for a long time. When he returns, they announce they're getting a divorce because of irreconcilable differences. They don't agree on money or lifestyle or anything. I'm a little confused here, because Don's mom goes on to marry Marianne's dad, and they are far less compatible on those topics, but they have a really solid marriage. I think something else must be going on here. Dad says that Mom left out the most important thing, but Mom interrupts and we never find out what it is. I've seen multiple guesses as to what happened to break up the marriage. I'm curious why it's not an issue for Dad and Carol's marriage, but that's neither here nor there. Dawn moves to Connecticut with Mom, where they buy a new house and she meets Marianne. Finally, Marianne remembers when she was eight years old. Dad had to go on a business trip, and Marianne didn't want a babysitter. She's really mouthy to Richard here. I mean, yeah, she's eight, but she always claims that her father was super strict and never let her get away with anything. Here, he lets her get away with fighting, back talk, and he gives her a sleepover. That does not sound like a strict dad! Marianne's babysitter is a mean older woman who refuses to let Marianne have a brownie after school. At the sleepover, Christy decides to prank the babysitter. They put pepper in her salad and tack her shoes to the floor. Mrs. Tate is amused by the tricks, and they have a lot of fun pranking each other. Marianne realizes babysitters are okay, and thus a babysitting legend is born. Oddly enough, Marianne's dad got Mrs. Tate through something called The Agency. I had no idea Stony Brook has an agency which provides parents with quality adult babysitters. We are never going to hear about this group again. So let's pretend Christy forced them out of business because she didn't want the competition. The end. Post-book follow-up. I liked this book. The premise was unique, and I liked how all the stories were separated. I've said this in other super special reviews. 
if Stacy has a three-chapter story, which is completely unrelated to the rest of the book, there is no good reason to have an 80-page gap in between the different chapters in her story. I much prefer reading Stacy's three chapters all at once, with no random separations. Everybody gets three chapters, except Claudia, Mallory, Marianne, and Shannon. They only get two. Claudia's story was heartwarming. I liked seeing Mimi again. I didn't think Christy's story was all that interesting, but it makes sense that she fondly remembers her first babysitting job. Marianne's story was interesting, too, although the story was directly copied from Book 36. An older woman who is a mean babysitter but becomes nicer after she gets pranked? Yeah, that, that's a repeat storyline. The funny part is that if a kid tried this on one of the babysitters, the BSC would not put up with it. Poor Mallory's story was a mess. It feels like Anne Martin lecturing fans on how to act towards her, complete with some Mallory humiliation. Jessie's story was an interesting angle showing how she originally hated her brother. I kind of wish we got to see more of her old neighborhood because she mentions it fairly often in her books. Shannon, Logan, Stacy, and Dawn all talk about what they were doing immediately before they joined the Babysitter's Club series. That was both a good and a bad idea. It's good because it ties their stories directly into things we already know. It's bad because it's retelling stories we already know. Logan was the worst offender as he talks about multiple scenes that are pulled directly from his first book. I preferred Stacy's story. Yeah, we already know the general story of how she learned about her diabetes, but this version fleshes out the story a bit more, gives us some more details. I don't like how Lane is a jerk the entire time, though. Lane is supposed to be a good person at this point in time. She doesn't turn evil until book 51, and we have seen her get along with Stacy just fine in the first 50 books. So, continuity! Dawn's story was kind of a letdown for me. Do I want to know why her parents got divorced? Yes. Do we ever find out why? No, we don't. The focus is more on how Dawn feels about the divorce, which is entirely appropriate. I just wish we knew for sure what happened. Shannon's story is the most unique because we've never had her narrate anything before, ever. But like Stacy's story, it's about a new girl moving to school and causing problems with the narrator's friends. I wish Shannon had gotten a third chapter just to flesh her out a bit more, because she's still mostly an unknown character to me, despite showing up in so many books. Does this mean Shannon is the blonde on the cover? I can't tell which one is Stacy and which one is Shannon. I thought one of them was Dawn, so yeah, I'm confused. So, I mostly liked all the stories. I only half liked Christy and Mallory, while Dawn left me disappointed and Logan was a repeat. So that's five out of the nine that I liked. Add some points because I half liked the others. Add more points because I 100% approve of the premise and format of this book. And, uh, oh, here's what the math comes out to. I give Babysitter's Club Super Special Number 11, The Babysitter's Remember, an 8 out of 10.